Jeremy Corbyn backer hits out at Brexit voters over Grenfell Tower fire tragedy. A prominent Jeremy Corbyn supporter has hit out at Brexit backers for wanting less fire and safety regulations following the Grenfell Tower disaster. Former Newsnight correspondent and Channel 4 economics editor Paul Mason blasted those who want to deregulate during a rant on LBC. He called into the station and fumed at the economic philosophy of the past 25 years after at least 58 people were killed as a result of the fire at the West London Tower block. He said, You've got to build in resilience and safety through regulation, people have got to constantly practice for disasters. You've got to constantly ask is this material we're putting on the outside of this building the right material? Because, without wanting to anticipate the inquiry, it is pretty clear that the clouding had a role in the spread of the fire. Now, in other words, we have to build in safety and resilience into our society through the state. He then took aim at those who backed the Leave campaign. For 25 years, the economic philosophy has been for the state to take a back seat, to deregulate, to step aside, he said. And we do know some of the people who advocated Brexit wanted there to be less fire and safety regulations in buildings. I think that's a goner now obviously. The comments come after Theresa May faced criticism for her response to the tragedy. The government has also faced criticism over safety measures in place at the block of flats. Demonstrators stormed a town hall building demanding justice for the victims of the tragedy on Friday. Theresa May met families and volunteers at a nearby church and promised a pound five million emergency fund for survivors. But scuffles broke out and police had to hold back the crowd outside St. Clement's Church in West London as the Prime Minister drove away. Later the crowd, many holding placards and chanting they must go, justice for Grenfell and blood on your hands, marched through Kensington towards Westminster. Theresa May can have soft Brexit but must accept free movement German minister says. Eager EU officials have offered Theresa May a soft Brexit as they are worried her weakened position will ruin negotiations but it must involve the free movement of people. The German foreign minister declared. Sigmar Gabriel, the German foreign minister, suggested the bloc are willing to make concessions, including ending the jurisdiction of the EU court over the UK. Mr. Gabriel said, perhaps there is now a chance to achieve a so called soft Brexit. The EU are willing to compromise because they are worried that a weakened Mrs. May increases the risk a deal will not be achieved which could threaten millions of jobs across the Brussels bloc. An EU negotiator said, It is the greatest uncertainty as we begin. Will the Prime Minister still be there at key decision moments over the summer? A weak government like this increases the risk of there being no deal at the end of the process. We do not want to be the ones making the situation more difficult. Mr. Gabriel said some within the EU are angry about Mrs. May's decision to hold a snap election as it has ended up creating a difficult, even impossible situation, without clear majorities and clear negotiation strategy. Mr. Gabriel, a close ally of Angela Merkel added, here, those who created such chaos would have long since gone. We will negotiate fairly and fair means that we want to keep the British as close as possible to the EU but never at the price that we divide the remaining 27 EU states. He claimed the UK would have to allow free movement to access the single market but did say the EU are willing to reduce the jurisdiction of EU judges in Britain. He offed the concession of a joint court that is staffed by Europeans and Britons which in principle follows the decisions of the European Court of Justice. A potential stumbling block in Brexit negotiations is whether a unique customs deal can be made to prevent a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. A diplomatic source said, doing a deal on Ireland and preserving the Good Friday Agreement might be the way the government quietly changes direction with a new agreement that will also be the template for the wider one with the EU. It follows reports that David Davis, the Brexit secretary, will call for a deal like no other in history as he heads into talks with the EU. Mr. Davis said there was a long road ahead but predicted a deep and special partnership. Juncker lashed out at UK as Brexit reveals democratic deficit and commission, experts says. 
Jean-Claude Juncker lashed out at Brexit because the UK's decision to abandon the bloc revealed a democratic deficiency in the EU Commission, a think tank boss has suggested. Shankar Singham, director of economic policy at the Legatum Institute, said European Commission officials should view Britain's departure from Brussels as an opportunity to review some of it the internal regulations and policies. Speaking exclusively to Express.co.uk, Mr Singham said, We are very interested in the UK in ensuring that our soon-to-be trading partner in terms of trade negotiations, the European Union, is a successful entity. That the member states themselves are successful. They are our closest trading partner. Having said that, I hope this is an opportunity for European Commission officials to have a look at some of the internal regulations and so forth some of the policies, and ask the sort of critical questions about why Britain left, why there is so much hostility to this. Mr Singham added Mr Jucker's negative approach to Brexit could be rooted in the fact it had shown people a lack of accountability within the Commission. He said, and also look at things like democratic accountability in the Commission. You know, that's why Juncker's comments were quite negative because this sort of shows people that there is this democratic deficit in the Commission not in the Council of Ministers, but in the Commission. Mr Singham said the real power in the bloc lay with the members, Council of Ministers and Head of States, and if they united, the Brussels bureaucracy would have to listen. He said, the member states and the Council of Ministers and the heads of states of the different European member states are the most powerful people. If they are agreed on something it is going to be very difficult for the Commission or, Michel, Barnier to do something else. That is where the negotiation mandate ultimately comes from. Now Barnier himself, as their negotiator, has been fairly reasonable about all of this. The European response to the Article 50 letter was very reasonable. The European negotiating position, there are certain things we might not agree with, but it's a relatively reasonable starting point. Mr Singham, who founded the International Roundtable on Trade and Competition said EU leaders would face a backlash over its anti-Brexit rhetoric as he insisted the Commission's job was to honour the will of its member states. He said, generally what happens in this sort of process is power will shift from the Commission to the member states. The issue is simply too important for member states to sort of leave it to the Commission, so what will happen over time is the Commission will become an implementer of the will of the member states which is what's supposed to happen anyway. I think some of the comments Juncker has made might accelerate that process, I think member states are pretty unhappy with the way this is being handled. Philip Hammond's soft Brexit U-turn, UK will leave single market and customs union. Brexit will see Britain leaving both the single market and the customs union, Philip Hammond has confirmed, after days of tantrums over a hard exit. Speaking to the BBC's Andrew Marr. The Chancellor said leaving the European Union also meant opting out of the bloc's trading arrangements. The confirmation Brexiteers have been waiting for came after the BBC host quizzed the Tory cabinet minister on his stance. Marr asked, to those in the Tory party who call you Remainer Phil, can you say we are definitely leaving the EU, absolutely on my watch, and we are defiantly leaving the single market on my watch? Mr Homan replied, yes. Definitely, we're definitely leaving the EU, and because we are leaving the EU we will be leaving the single market and the customs union. The question is not whether we're leaving the customs union, the question is what do we put in its place in order to deliver the objectives which the Prime Minister set out in the Lancaster House speech. Mr Hammond, however, added he wanted to avoid the cliff edge scenario feared by Remainers, as he told the BBC host a seamless departure was needed. He said, that is the issue, when I talk about Brexit that supports British jobs, British investment, British business, I mean a Brexit that avoids those cliff edges. That ensures we segue seamlessly from the customs union that we are in at the moment to a new arrangement in the future that will continue to allow British goods to flow. Not just without tariffs, because tariffs are a relatively small part of the problem, it's without delays and bureaucracy. Mr Homan added. We have got to make sure our border continues to work seamlessly and that's probably the number one challenge for business.
It comes after senior Whitehall sources told the Daily Telegraph that Mr. Hammond was pushing for a deal where Britain could retain associate membership of the customs union, but retain the freedom to negotiate separate deals on trade services. Speaking ahead of a meeting in Luxembourg with EU finance chiefs on Friday, the Chancellor was also vague when asked by reporters if Britain should stick to Theresa May's hard Brexit plan. Mr. Homan said, My clear view, and I believe the view of the majority of people in Britain, is we should prioritize protecting jobs, protecting economic growth and protecting prosperity as we enter those negotiations and taking them forward. Mr. Hammond has made no secret of his preference for a soft Brexit, where the UK would withdraw from the EU but retain some form of associate membership to the customs union. The Chancellor's words are in stark contrast to the bullish message sent out by the government's Brexit department ahead of Monday's talks. A spokesman for Britain's Brexit department said, as we set out in the Article 50 letter, our view is that withdrawal agreement in terms of the future relationship must be agreed alongside each other. We believe that the withdrawal process cannot be concluded without the future relationship also being taken into account. The withdrawal and future are intimately linked. Thanks you for watching.